et l'avenir amoureux et le grand Inazi qui a une apparence, euh, je dirais, royale parce qu'elle s'impose dans, dans la forêt. Donc c'est un palmier imposant et, et qui fait qu'elle est la seule, elle se trouve seulement dans l'ouest de la forêt du Kartala jusqu'à preuve du contraire. Bon, si jamais on découvre une population de cette espèce, je pense que ce euh, ça sera, ça sera une bonne nouvelle, non seulement pour le pays, mais pour le parc aussi. What was really exciting was when we were heading up Mount Kafala for the first few times uh, was the anticipation. And as you gained elevation and the forest moved into native uh, forest, the chances of us coming across this palm increased. So in early 2022, plans to renovate the palm house were really starting to kick off. Now the Palm House is uh, an immensely important building, but it also contains a really important conservation collection of plants. And the problem with the renovation for the plants is that the Palm House has to be cleared. And that puts palms like Ravinia morii behind me here uh, at, at risk. And given that at that time, we didn't even know if Ravinia morii still persisted in the wild, I became extremely concerned and it was obvious that we had to go to the Comoros to find out. So we have here um, our Ravinia morii specimen, uh, one of the tallest palms now in the palm house. Um, you can see its stem uh, going up right here, right up into the canopy. And you can see the, the crown of leaves uh, particularly well from the balcony at the top. So Ravinia morii is one of the most important species in the palm house collection. Uh, Ravinia morii is a uh, very tall growing, um, solitary stemmed palm specimen. It's known to be very rare in the wild and it, we also now believe it to be the only one left of its kind in cultivation. The hope is from this trip that, that when we go to the Comoro Islands we'll find uh, breeding populations of this Ravinia morii, which will mean that we're much better informed in deciding what to do with the specimen that currently resides in the palm house and is thought to be the only example of this species in cultivation. We spent two weeks um, in Grand Camor in November 2023. Uh, this was the reconnaissance trip to get to know the uh, local partners that we're going to be working with and also to, to gain an initial understanding of the um, dis distribution of Ravinia morii. It was, it was a huge relief to find Ravinia morii. It was on our first field day. Yeah, this one is yeah. for sure a morii. That looks like it too. I had kind it's of expected likely, yeah. that we would find it because we were targeting the yeah, location, yeah. a place called Boboni, where the palm was actually originally discovered and where it was described from, at least by, by scientists. Nevertheless, I was very relieved when we did actually see some in the flesh. Although it was really fantastic to find Ravinia morii, what was immediately obvious was that it occurred in just a few scattered individuals. There was no great population. So How are we feeling about this? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm apprehensive. I'm sweating. Look at Will. As fresh as a daisy. And so obviously that pushed us on to explore other areas of the forest around Kathala. So the main aim of uh, this upcoming trip is to get a really clear understanding of the diversity and distribution of palm species across the whole of the Comoro Islands, which is not properly documented. So we're going to arrive, and we're going to team up with our partners, and we're going to get into the field. The Comor, uh, as the name indicates, nous avons, euh, les Comores se trouvent euh, dans l'océan Indien, entre Madagascar et Mozambique. Euh, je suis Ramata Mada, la conservatrice du Parc National Kartala. Je travaille dans le Parc National Kartala, qui est euh, un parc parmi les parcs nationaux des Comores. Euh, ces parcs sont créés par euh, le gouvernement des Comores et le PNUD-GF. Euh, moi, c'est Saïd Moussa. 
je suis mobilisateur communautaire au parc national Kartala. Donc une des, des mes missions, c'est euh, la sensibilisation communautaire et l'éducation environnementale. Et il y a aussi euh, la mobilisation communautaire pour les activités qui concernent la conservation euh, de la biodiversité au niveau du parc national Kartala. Euh, je m'appelle Andilia Mohamed Abderrahman, j'enseigne à l'université, je suis responsable de l'art bien national, je suis docteur en écologie végétale. Et le Ravne Amorei est le grand Inazi qui a une apparence, euh, je dirais, royale parce qu'elle s'impose dans, dans la forêt. Donc c'est un palmier imposant. Et, et qui fait qu'elle est la seule, elle se trouve seulement dans l'ouest de la forêt du Kartala, jusqu'à preuve du contraire. Bon, si jamais on découvre une population de cette espèce, je pense que ce euh, ça sera, ça sera une bonne nouvelle, non seulement pour le pays, mais pour le parc aussi, parce que là on va pouvoir développer euh, un système de conservation et ça, va, ça pourrait être le miroir de, des autres euh, individus. Et là, ça va faciliter le, la, la, la conservation, puisqu'on pourra avoir plus de détails sur son milieu de vie, etc. Euh, puisque maintenant, on a peu d'informations sur cette espèce. Ce qui était vraiment excitant, c'était quand nous étions en train de Mount Kavala pour la première fois en train de chercher Ravinia Morii. Uh, was the anticipation. And as you gained elevation and the forest moved from cultivated ground into what felt more like a semblance of kind of native uh, forest, the chances of us coming across this palm increased. <sighs> Crikey. Got it. That's incredible. Yeah, it's incredible. <laughs> it is incredible though. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So what a beaut. <laughs> no, what <laughs> Yeah. It's a good way to make us look happy, Will. <laughs> amazing. It is amazing though. I love it. Right. That totally amazing. Can you see any more? I think the path goes that way, and we should look round the back, really, shouldn't we? Yeah, and that's okay. where they all are. Yeah, oh, look, the cows are coming yeah. in. Yeah, great. The, rain. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. the texture of the base, yeah, it's like that's a amazing. warty, and all of that down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's a very really cool one. Incredible. Oh, look a bit strange stroking the tree. Voilà. Voilà. Yeah, yeah. Bit of gardening on the floor. Yeah, yeah. Do you think this one's flowered ever? I don't think it ever has. No, it's it's a young. little baby. I think you would know. It would have. It's a juvenile. Yeah, it's actually. So it's about like that's 23, 24. 20, 25 centimeters. That's even a little bit big. It's more yeah. like 24. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. It's the palm king of this jungle. Yeah. I mean, this was. Mm. You remember we walked through here, and we were seeing. Oh, so a few bananas there, a few bananas there. We were not seeing this. No. So this openness, we had narrow paths, and uh, you know the light. Have we gone past the line of where the ravine is? No. no. So that's a bit further. Yeah. It's very difficult not to be upset here because we're now walking through a banana field and last year we came through here and it was closed forest and um, a few bananas, but nothing like this. It feels like we're in the end game for this part of the forest.
so this uh, this scene speaks for itself really um, here we are next to the most spectacular Ravinia Morii that we found last year and uh, well, we've come through huge banana fields and now we have a, a large valuable tree felled that nearly hit hit the, the big Morii um, and uh, yeah it's really heartbreaking um, but I'm here today with 25 Comorian uh, partners who are trying to tackle this problem. It's a huge challenge. There are 40,000 people who live around this park. Um, it may be illegal to use the forest, but they have to use it because that's their livelihood and that's the core challenge for this kind of park. Bon, en fait, ce qu'on a constaté par rapport à cette expérience, ça nous a permis déjà de, de voir l'état de, de, de palmiers au, au Comoir, donc les menaces qui pèsent sur la biodiversité de façon générale, mais aussi spécifiquement sur les palmiers. Donc ça va nous permettre, nous, en tant que responsables du parc, de, de prendre des dispositions sur la conservation, bien entendu. Certes, on avait, on avait des cibles de conservation, mais actuellement, on va actualiser le, le PAG. Mm -hmm. Et puis on va tenir compte de, de, ces, de ces palmiers pour les introduire sur le plan d'aménagement. Donc euh, c'est une bonne chose pour venir sur le terrain avec vous. Donc ça nous, permis aussi, ça nous a permis aussi, nous et notre équipe également, de bien identifier le, les espèces et puis euh, de, de voir le, leur répartition, comment c'est par rapport au, au, à, à, aux menaces actuelles. Donc ça c'est très important pour nous. Et quand on vous euh, les arbres. Oui, c'est un, okay. un défi de tous les jours, parce que ces gens-là, comme je t'avais dit la dernière fois, ce sont des gens qui coupent ça pour le, le, la survie. Le, oui. le, donc, euh, à chaque fois, ils nous demandent la question, mais si on ne fait pas ça, on, on va manger. Qu'est-ce qu'on va faire Donc maintenant, c'est le défi majeur du parc. Donc, euh, vous voyez, comme on vous a dit tout à l'heure, que notre équipe est très restante par rapport... On a 16 villages. Mmh. On a 16 mmh. villages à gérer. Ouais. Et 26 214 hectares, ah, ça c'est pas facile. 20, Donc, 20 000 26 214 hectares à gérer. Donc avec euh, seulement 20 écogardes. Donc vous imaginez que c'est un. C'est pas assez. C'est pas assez, effectivement, pour gérer tout ça. C'est un Donc, travail. Euh, déjà, le, le, le Ravni Amorei vit dans le milieu naturel. Actuellement, elle ne vit que là-bas. Et si le, on ne protège pas son environnement, Là, le Ravne Amorei, même si ce n'est pas coupé par un paysan, il va mourir parce que c'est une plante, même si on n'a pas assez d'informations pour l'instant, mais qui est dépendante des, des animaux. Or, ce sont les plantes qui nourrissent les animaux et ce sont les, les animaux qui pollinisent les plantes, qui font que les, les plantes se multiplient. Donc, euh, avoir l'ensemble en bonne santé, c'est avoir une vie meilleure. Alors, pour l'instant, nous, en ce qui nous concerne, l'air bien national à l'université, nous, on fait les tests, on, on teste les germinations, on fait la germination de, des graines. On a, ça a marché, on a fait les, les, la, les tests des moreillis. Avec euh, une semaine, on arrive à faire euh, germer le, le débrandi, les quatre espèces, ainsi que les espèces exotiques aussi. On, on essaie de les multiplier rapidement de faire germer les, les graines, mais, mais aussi les endroits où on voit qu'ils vont être coupés pour que ce soit une culture ou l'urbanisation. Si nous sommes au courant, on passe vite récupéré par une méthode de transplantation. The sowing is very simple. You can use a pot, but you can use anything around you. Uh, old bowls, uh, plastic tubs. Plastic. But it's important that the light cannot get in. Very simple. Take your seeds. Half in, half out and out. Yeah, cocoa yeah. to the bed. Yeah, well, it's not. If you bury that, you're. Ah, oui. Yeah, that would do it. So, that way round. At the back. It's important. Every. Devon. Devon. Where's It's important. Every seed is different. Sensibiliser, inciter les gens à les avoir dans leur jardin. 
Mais aussi, nous, en, de notre côté, à l'herbier national, à l'université, on fait des tests de germination pour euh, voir comment on peut multiplier rapidement. Parce que ça, c'est une question de, de temps. Donc, euh, on a fait et on continue. C'est bon. A, re a really special moment at the end of the trip was our visit to Dr. Uledi and his garden. Uledi is one of Amdiliat's mentors and a former professor uh, at the university. Madame Amdiliat, c'est chez vous. Je pense que vous avez l'allée des palmiers. And we used his garden as, I guess, a test bed, a place to try out um, the first planting of Ravinia morii uh, in, the, in the capital of the Comoros. It's really around the impact of taking the time to do this, actually seeing the consequences and the, the positive impacts of us rocking up in Comores, talking to fantastic, inspiring local team about it and enthusing them to, to take action. That's just been so rewarding and we've made fantastic friends in a faraway place. It's wonderful. So over the, over the next few years, we'll be growing on the palms in the nursery. From what we've grown so far, we know that they're quite fast growing. So it'll be a series of uh, growing on, potting on, ensuring that we feed them, fertilize them well so that they're healthy. Uh, we'll be able to plant uh, Ravinia morii back into the glass house. The, the Comoros project makes the palm house renovation about a lot more than just fixing glass and, and metal. It means that a real piece of palm conservation has happened because of the renovation and it, it's going to give us a great story to tell when we reopen the house.